so much. Since we have you all in here, please stay here because we're going straight to the next debate, to the last debate of the Zermatt Summit, so that we can uh, finish it in style and in time, which is also very important. Um, could I ask the panelists of this debate, we're staying with islands. Uh, we've just had, uh, uh, or just saw uh, the beautiful island of Bali. Now we're going to other beautiful islands, the island of El Hierro and the island of Mauritius. Could I ask Javier Morales and Jean-Luc Villain, please, on stage? And once again, a last hooray also for Gunter Pauli, who's taking over for that last debate. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, take a seat, take a seat. We're not going to be standing here. Um, really, the music, Elisabeth, je t'adore. Well, I mean, it's just impossible to have a meeting like this and be thriving all the time at that level and not having music to really have your mind ah, elevated at that level. Thank you so much. Now, we're having two people here. I've had the privilege of working with them. Well, Javier, that's about 20, more than 20 years already we're working together. And, and what I would like to do is to have a, a, a quick synopsis. What happened in El Hierro? You, your island, that island was supposed to have no one living on it anymore. And so they were planning to convert it into space shuttle. a space shuttle. And what did you decide to do? You said, no. You know, it, 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 did you say no? And how long did you have to say no? It took three years. Took three years. Can we have the microphone on, please? It took three years. And when you realized that the no was a no, then you decided to do what? You decided to do what? Yes, when, uh, when we decided not to, to install a space shuttle basis on the island, uh, people asked, uh, it was a, a participation a debate and process of all the society, and people asked what uh, to do instead. If we said no to this, we must say yes to other things. And, so, and that was 25 years ago? Uh, it was 1995. 1995, so 24 years ago, they said, what do we want now? And the answer was? Sustainable development. And they said they wanted to have the island self-sufficient in energy and water. How much did it cost? Well, uh, we devoted a regular uh, every year to sustainable uh, um, projects instead of um, conventional projects. The energy project uh, cost uh, 82, uh, 82 million euros. Uh, just stop, ladies and gentlemen, for a second. 82 million euro for a project that affected how many inhabitants? 10,000. What do you think, white elephant? I mean, we would say 82 million euro for 10,000 inhabitants is a white elephant, but it was not a white elephant. How long... So, you got the project going, you have the renewable energy, windmills, you're capturing the wind, you're having the water, the water gives you additional backup energy, and when this was started to work, how much time did you need to pay back your debt? Well, um, we have a, an additional loan of 25 million euros, and uh, it was a loan for 15 years, and we paid back in three years. Uh, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, so 10,000 people take an additional loan, except for the capital, of 25 million. And uh, the results of the business uh, that they develop with water and power is so good that they pay back, not in 15 years, but in three years. Do we hear the difference? That means someone goofed up in the calculations, right? Renewable energy is much better than we expect. Yes, really. Uh, not only is it important to, to clean the, the air and to be responsible, but as well the money is, uh, remains on the local economy and you can create opportunities, opportunities and cycle inside. And this is uh, the wealth and the future for people is now people is receiving money for buying electrical cars, for installing PV panels on, on the roofs and so, so on. So, so wait, wait a second. So the money that you're making now, 
Since you've turned the island to 100% self-sufficient in water and power, now you're earning money on that, since you have paid back that loan. That money you use to finance electric cars, to install solar panels on the roofs. So it's the renewable energy and the decision to go for 100% sustainability that leads you to have the budget to go all the way. Yes, uh, that helped us uh, as well. Uh, we, we need to be more sustainable on any other field. So not only on the electricity, but even on mobility, on cars and so on. But uh, every time you, you are sustainable on, on food, on water, on energy, on so on, and you are the owner, you can reinvest that money on the local economy and create opportunities. El Liero is not against globalization. It is not against capitalism. It is against getting more revenue for the local people. It's, it's in favor of getting more revenue to local people. So, but you're not only doing water and power. You have your own wine. You have your own milk. You have your own meat. You have your... How does it work in a small island of 10,000 people? How can you make a competitive industry with milk with cheese, with yogurts, with wines, with... How does it work? We are told that this is not the kind of economy that, that, that you can make profits on. Yes, the key, we, we have created uh, different cooperatives in order that uh, the benefits of the, the sales uh, goes to the producer. So we have a cooperative for livestock, a, a cooperative for uh, fishermen, another cooperative for farmers, a cooperative uh, for transport, another cooperative for tourism. And um, w what we made is to, to create uh, facilities to uh, like a cheese factory, a slaughtery, a wine factory and so on. So your slaughterhouse, remember, the European Union has been closing down little slaughterhouses all around the world, all around Europe. But you reopened the slaughterhouse Yes, the slaughterhouse is operating and, and, and of course uh, the added value of all that activities increase the, the income and uh, we, we manage to uh, give that income back to the producer. I was fascinated by their winery. How many, co how many farmers are contributing with grapes? Yes, about uh, 150 or about. 150 people who are growing grapes in the garden got together and said, let's get our own wine. How many bottles of wine are you making now? It's about uh, 2,100 liters a year. 2,100? No, 2,100. Ah, 200,000. Uh, 200,000. 200,000. Yes. 200,000 liters of wine, ladies and gentlemen. If we ever go to El Hierro and want to be inspired. Now, how do you take that as your responsibility? You are working with the idea of a living university. Yes, the idea is that uh, we see that uh, uh, when we create systems and, uh, and we uh, Mm, on that system, uh, see that every byproduct can uh, can be transformed in, with added value in other uh, products, and we manage to design the system to be as close as possible to zero emissions. The income increases and increases and increases, and so uh, our idea. Uh, with Gunther and with all of people who has come to El Hierro in different events that we have had, is to have a place where you can live sustainability. Not only to, to talk about that, that you can live that all the food, all the energy, all the water, all the mobility, all the waste, everything, that uh, when you are there uh, learning and working uh, is uh, sustainable and you can see the numbers and the benefits for the society and for your society when you come back to, to your country or to, to your village, that it's possible to do that. 
So this is now uh, our mission. It is the, is, uh, I think this is the best contribution we can do. So after 25 years of turning El Hierro into the first island in the world to be self-sufficient in power and energy and have the economic growth and development, okay. they're saying, let the world now come and we will share with you how we've done it. And what's the business model behind it? Because it's blue economy, of course. But it's a business model that... It, it <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But the key is there's a business model behind it. And I think the only proof that we have today around the world where a community of 10,000 people can turn into a competitive, happy market model, I think is Iliado. It really is. And I have been very privileged and honored to follow that. I would like to see this university go. But then we discovered we're very close to where Saint Exupéry was landing, huh? Yeah, yes. And it was Columbus who left from your island. Uh, yes, Columbus left from uh, La Gomera Island, but uh, curiously on the directly, uh, the island that most uh, is known is El Hierro. Is <laughs> <laughs> Because it's the, the last reference going to America. So his island is the furthest away in Europe. And you remember what we said yesterday, change starts in the periphery. This is change in the periphery. What are the big visions beyond? You're going to go for 100% electric cars? Or gas, or air compressed cars? Or how is the mobility being debated now? Well, the mobility at this moment is uh, uh, on electric vehicles is uh, the first step. But uh, finally, what we want is to have 100% clean mobility that uh, may be electrical. Uh, of course, uh, we have uh, um, analyzed and we have de uh, debated another options. For instance, uh, uh, compressed air uh, vehicles is an uh, inventor from Australia that has visited the island. And it's very interesting because we can we, we don't need we would uh, wouldn't need batteries, but we only need uh, bottles like uh, scuba diving bottles. And uh, okay, uh, there are many options, but the, the idea all the time is to be sustainable sustainable on all fields of activity. We can be fair in one area and unfair in the other. So uh, the work is uh, ahead and ahead. Uh, we started with uh, a portfolio of, of projects and every time we discard one of that uh, project because we discover something better. So that's uh, the, the action. But one of your characteristics is that they have uh, been avoiding batteries. I mean, that's why also your integrated uh, electric system for the island with the water and the, and the windmills, mm. you didn't put in batteries. No, uh, the battery really is the, um, the upper reservoir that we have the, the water uh, upwards. And, uh, and we have the, um, that uh, reservoir, we have uh, flywheels to stabilize the... Uh, did, the you, did you hear flywheel? Who, who, who knows flywheels? Who invented flywheels? Leonardo da Vinci. I mean, they have installed flywheels. And did you get your patents? Uh, patents? El, uh, el patente. Para la, la te did you get your technology uh, for, protected? For, for the central? For the electric, uh, for the flywheels. For, um, well, uh, the flywheels uh, we, we bought to an enterprise that I think is ABB, uh, an enterprise that, that uh, make it. So when you switch from wind to hydropower, when you switch the power, you need a backup, and that's typically a battery. They're doing it with flywheels. It's the first case in the world to use flywheels to switch in an electric system from one renewable power to another renewable power. I just wanted to highlight that. If any of you is an engineer and interested, that is something that is really fascinating in the engineering of the system that you have installed. How many 
people are really now in favor of this? The people who were there 25 years ago and said, let's do that. Has it really changed the mentality? Have people come back to the island? Yes, yeah, so I, I think that uh, the feeling, the most important feeling that uh, I have perceived is that uh, maybe 30 years ago, when you say, where are you from? Uh, young people say, oh, I'm from El Hierro. But now when you ask some uh, young people, where are you from? I'm from El Hierro. So they feel proud. They, they feel the, they are in a, in, in a place that has a, a meaning, has a, something to, to contribute. Because uh, all time uh, along our history, we have been uh, asking for help uh, for a hospital, for an airport, for a harbor, for education and so on. And this is the first time we can contribute and it's our duty to contribute. But I think uh, what uh, Javier just contributed is to me the most important. People thought that the island had no future. They thought a community far away from the center has no future. Today, the people who live there are proud to be from there. And I think this is what we need. We need to have pride in what we have and where we are, even if you're in the periphery. And that is how I think we can recover a lot of the energy in societies, to be proud of where we are and make great contributions to serve the common good. Thank you. So, um, we, we are talking about uh, sustainability and abundance. Uh, we start with a, uh, with a vision. What happen, What will we happen if instead of less forest uh, on, on, on the world, less uh, f fresh water, less fish and more problems of, uh, of the ocean, we should be able to have uh, better relationships, uh, a better future. All of that is possible because uh, along these uh, 30 years that uh, we have been, uh, been working, we uh, discover that we live in a, in a planet of abundance, but when we see economical uh, distribution, we see a scarcity. And even publicity uh, tell us that we don't have cheap dreams. That's not true, but uh, many people uh, believe what television says, and uh, even young people uh, get uh, manipulated by, uh, by that messages. So uh, we are proposing that uh, we can create abundance and happiness, but it's very important to understand who we are, who really we are. To, to care for nature, to have connections, to have diversity, and to have freedom. And so, what, what is the reason why we uh, make the opposite that we really want? The reason is fear. The reason is ignorance about what happiness is and ignorance about who really we are in depth. So the role of the economy is all of the life to thrive, and, and all of people to be happy. This is the, the mission, that's the mission of, of the economy. What we must know about happiness is that when we are really poor, we are not happy. But uh, uh, it is not a, a linear relation. If we have uh, three million euros, uh, we are not hap um, double uh, that uh, happier than if we are 100, uh, 1.5. So, what really happened uh, on seven different studies is when you reach a certain level of income, about 70,000 uh, euros a year, you don't become happier uh, earning more money. So uh, each time the happiness is, it doesn't increase. What really increases your happiness is, is to be connected, is to, to have a, a message to do, to do and, uh, and to have a, a contribution. Who really we are? When we, we look at the, at the universe and, uh, and you see the universe, we really are looking inside our, ourselves. Because inside ourselves, uh, inside every atom, there is a void 
uh, equivalent to the void that, that we see at the universe. And we have a planet. This is a, a, the picture. The, this uh, dot is uh, the Earth. Uh, is a picture uh, taken by, by the Voyager. And, uh, and the, our atmosphere uh, compared with a, a, a ball or football, soccer, is like a sheet of paper. This is the only place that we have to live. We don't know on the universe any other place uh, to live. But uh, how can we create abundance? This is uh, the reason why, why we are here. How can we convince the big companies to change? And uh, our experience, we are there, close to Africa. Uh, we, oh, the island is a biosphere reserve uh, for, by, declared by UNESCO in 2000. Uh, and the island we conceive as a system. Every byproduct of an activity is an input of the next activity. And we, we now, we are, uh, have a organic bananas for uh, 20, 22 years this, this year, organic bananas, and we are capable to produce more uh, per plant than conventional uh, crops, ch chemical uh, crops. Uh, we, we now are capable to produce 50, 50.5 uh, kilos per plant, uh, so an average compared with 40, that is the average on conventional crops. We have a school of livestock and students to create sustainability, and this is a forage, uh, and as well we have a marine reservation. Okay, a marine res reservation promoted uh, by the fishermen. All fishermen on the island are young people, all of them, about 40, 45 people, and we have as well an uh, open contest, uh, submarine uh, picture uh, photography contest uh, every year, uh, connected with uh, tourism. And as well, we are working on, on this kind of fertilizer. It's an organic fertilizer, because when uh, we, we uh, talk about the food, the, the soil and the fertilizer is not about the chemicals, it's about the microbes, it's about the life on the soil, what uh, gives you high yields and gives you health and gives you uh, taste and gives you quality. This, uh, okay, uh, these are, are examples, you can have the, the presentation on the organization, uh, very cheap to produce, locally produce, and this is our facility. Uh, we have five windmills, uh, we produce 11 megawatts and the average consumption is uh, five. And this is the upper reservoir, the lower reservoir, the pipes that connect one with other, the, the pumping station. And uh, we are the owners of 66% of the facility and 10% is a uh, Canary Island government. 24% is private enterprise. So every year we uh, earn about uh, uh, two or three million uh, euros as um, net income. And you can uh, consult online right now which amount of uh, clean energy we are pro producing every, every minute. So our record this year, last month, was 24 consecutive uh, days, 100% renewable energy. Uh, maybe other days we are 80%, 85, or, or 70, or so on. So our loan we pay back in, in three years. This is the budget, about uh, 350,000 uh, uh, euros every year for, for the cars. And what is, is important is that we recycle the, the money of, of, on, on the island of uh, electricity, the water, the food, and so on. Uh, two million euros for a community like uh, ours means 200 million euros for a city of one million. Imagine what can we do on, on the society with 200 million euros every year. But 
only with uh, electricity. But we can do much and much more. So I, I finish here, and uh, if uh, we have time, I, I follow. Excellent. <laughs> of course, I have to admit that at the time we started working together, we had no idea about sky sails. So, you know, but I think there's still room for sky sails, no? Hmm. Yes, yes. Because if you're going to go for all the electric cars, you we, need more power, you we, are... We have an agreement to go and to work together. So this is the advantage, Jean-Luc, of coming uh, later in the game. I mean, Jean-Luc uh, from the island of Mauritius, it's 1 million inhabitants? 1.2. 1.2 million inhabitants, so that's the 200 million dollars we talked about. If you apply what they're applying, it's an extra 200 million dollars in the local economy. And if we're in using sky sails, so I think we need the table up front again. Let, let's get the table here. Come on, table, table. Come on, boys. And let's invite uh, Arnaud Lagesse uh, to come and join us. Let's get two chairs behind here. Bonjour. Arnaud is the CEO of the IBL group in Mauritius. Jean-Luc was here last year and he heard about sky sails. You came over and looked at it. The electric authority of uh, Mauritius said, extraordinary, we want to have this. So what have you decided you will start with? A partnership. A partnership. Ladies and gentlemen, the partnership will be signed here. <laughs> Stefan, could you please, and Christopher, you are the witness behind it. Please take a seat. Where is the pen? I know Christopher always has a beautiful pen with him. There we are. Please, is it the Zermatt pen? Yes. Okay. There you are. Ladies and gentlemen, I think this is again very important. Last year, Jean-Luc heard about it. This year, the signing. When is the installation? Next year. Next year, 2020, before the Zermatt summit? When we're lucky, yes. When we're lucky, yes. <laughs> so that means that two years after first hearing about this, the first sky sales are in Mauritius. Thank you. La signature, je vous en prie. You know, I think it is so important that we see this moving forward. And I think we have to have this, the sense that we are surfing waves. So you can join the surfers. You know, this is important. You can join the surfers and join the waves. And I think that is really what uh, this proposal is all about. Next year, we will have an agreement with El Hierro. Yeah. Maybe. We, we have been talking yesterday. Okay. Sky sails going to Mauritius. We have already discussed with the Maldives, the government of the Maldives. We are discussing with quite a few governments. If you're an island, a sky sail is an incredible option. And what is the big difference? That the sky sail provides base load and the windmill is peak. That's why you have these irregularities in the supply. Merci. 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 Thank you. And thank you, Christopher, for connecting us. Thank you so much. This is uh, wonderful for you. Thank you. So, thank you. Let, let me have a little discussion with... Uh, but on a note of perspective, do you think you need 20... Jean-Luc, uh, to conclude on a, on, on a note of perspective, we have not so much time left. 25 years to get these results. You've heard uh, the incredible experiences uh, of uh, El Hierro and Javier. Do you think you need 25 years to turn Mauritius around, or could it go faster? Hmm. Mauritius, we have uh, 1.2 million people. We have several islands, because uh, we always talk, think about Mauritius, but we no, must not forget Rodrigue. Rodrigue is a 30,000 30, people yeah. island, so it's the same, uh, same, uh, uh, size. same figures, same mm. size. And uh, obviously, we must thank very warmly Javier for all what he did, because he, he set up the path, and I think that we can learn, learn a lot from uh, his experience, and so we can uh, save time on this, because 25 years, I, uh, of course, I didn't know how you did, but possibly, you have a lot of experience and lessons that we can 
uh, take advantage of in order to develop our own, uh, own projects. So I hope that we'll go quicker. <coughs> um, we know that uh, we have challenges that they are coming with the warming, with the scarcity of uh, some energies. Um, the fact that the renewable energies today um, hardly can uh, replace uh, the, the, the petroleum that is going down and the, the coal that we must uh, make go down. Uh, but thanks to sky cells, we have a, a, a new technology that has a double benefit, and I think that uh, it is the only one, except hydro, which potentially is already uh, used, that can bring this. It's a low-cost, uh, sorry, low-tech technology, as you mentioned in your speech, and uh, it is as well a base load technology. Um, the, 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 I'm not sure of the English for the word, but the factor de charge in French yeah. of, uh, of sky cells is about 6,000 years uh, per year. Uh, that is make it comparable with uh, nuclear and with coal, without, of course, the backwards of nuclear and coal. So it's, uh, we, we really believe that uh, beyond the fact to, to bring an, another uh, new renewable technology more efficient, uh, I really think that it will make, it will change the way people think about energy. But Jean-Luc, your, your company IBL, is doing beer, is doing fish, is doing hotels. Hmm. I mean, how as a large company, you're a billion dollar business more or less, if I recall, exactly. yeah. how do you take a billion dollar company and start something as new as a sky sale? I mean, this is very innovative. Yeah, I think that- How do you explain that it's exactly there where you are, it's possible? I believe that uh, we must not forget that IBL is a one billion dollar company, not sure, but uh, it's a conglomerate made a lot of different companies, a few big companies and many others, uh, uh, littles. And so IBL has always kept um, two spirits, one flexibility as entrepreneurship. Is and it a family control business? It is a family control business, absolutely. Uh, it's a 100% Mauritian uh, held uh, business as well. And uh, typically, uh, there is a very strong uh, history of entrepreneurship and partnership in, uh, in, Mar in Mauritius. So for us, it is totally natural to, to step into, into a new uh, technology and to make it uh, in partnership with somebody else. So and, and, and this is one of the projects where you have a whole portfolio of initiatives. Uh, uh, and, and how is it going with Ivanka? So, um, where is Ivanka? So we have... You know, we are... Ah, okay. We can talk about in your, in your presence, of course, but are you doing mushrooms in Mauritius now? Not yet. Not but, yet? Uh, okay. We are going to do in a few months. I'm uh, going uh, you know, mushrooms have to pop up. Or maybe in know, a few somehow. weeks. We are going, uh, I'm going to, to, to visit uh, Ivanka's installation in Belgrade just after the summit. <laughs> We already are. So you're going from here straight to yeah, Ivanka's straight. mushroom farm? Absolutely. Okay, who likes to come along? Absolutely. Um, we have, uh, Ivanka has already uh, made uh, a training in Mauritius of uh, several people, and uh, then we, we developed uh, a project. This project has been accepted by the different uh, stakeholders, and now we are, we are clearly uh, in the phase of implementation of this project. And then you have a company with chemicals. You're well. selling chemicals. Absolutely. Not always the nice ones, I uh, understood. You know, there is a demand I'm for sorry, that. I'm sorry, we have to be transparent <laughs> here. This is it. Uh, huh? Sure, we are, we are using as well PET for our bottling operation. We are, but we are working on this, and I would say that uh, uh, the commitment of, of the group is really to go to sustainable solutions. Okay? And uh, that is why we investigate some solutions for the, for the PET. Uh, two days ago, I, I was with a French startup. Uh, with, uh, with inventing a, um, a process to, um, uh, to turn back the PET in monomer, okay. so that it can, pro it can have a full, right. uh, a full uh, re, um, I would say, re-engineering of the, of the monomer. Well, then so you have to talk to Marco, because Marco will be interested with to talk Indefinite about recycling that. possibilities. Right. That's a, that's a startup that is working uh, today. But in the chemicals, you're doing something with your special citrus fruits. You're, yes. You, you have so in Mauritius a very unique citrus fruit. We have, uh, yes, uh, we have six projects that we have uh, selected out of a list of 30 projects that have been 
uh, imagine with the help of uh, Gunther in a three days workshop session in which we have uh, many companies of the group working together. It was a very interesting phase, but we had too many projects, I would say. We had to focus. There are too many opportunities. Too many Isn't that nice? <laughs> and too many opportunities. <laughs> and 20 others will, co will, uh, will come later. So really, we have to focus on six. And we focused on one is to make detergent uh, out of, uh, of um, orange and uh, citrus waste. You know, this is a citrus fruit that is not very popular around the world because the skin is too thick. The bigarade. It's the orange amer. It's, it's, it's not very good because it has a skin that is too thick. But I said if it has a too thick skin, I can convert the skin into a vinegar, which will be your toilet mm -hmm. cleaner. So you don't have it for eating. You make a juice and then the leftovers, you will make your chemicals. Is that working? Is that, that is working. That is working as well with the oranges, the orange that are used by the customers in the hotel. And we made the calculation. If we take all the orange peels in the hotel and we convert them in vinegar, we can clean the toilets of the hotel, of all the rooms. So it's a totally circle, and, and the figures... And this is an idea for Zermatt? <laughs> uh, you had orange juice in the morning? <laughs> it's working. It's working. So the hotel business becomes the customer who starts leading Absolutely. this. Absolutely. We have, uh, we have the, 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 in our activities, we have the deluxe uh, hospitality company that you have mentioned. And uh, we have the very uh, charismatic and powerful CEO at the head of the, this, state, the, this, this hotel, and he wants really to change and to, to, to move forward. Uh, this, this hotel uh, had the, the motto before, we make each moment matter. And believe me, they do it very well. But now they want to go a step further, and they want to move to, we care about what matters. And it coincided it at the moment when we when we, Gunther, we presented different opportunities and technologies and innovation that we could introduce in the hotel. And he said, at the moment, he stand up, he said, but what you're saying to me is exactly how we can, uh, imp uh, how we can detail the, 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 the new motto that we want to develop. So there has been a strong connection of this, about this. And one of the, one of the, 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 and the, the six innovation that we had selected did fit perfectly in this new concept. Plus, 15 others that we have added and that we'll do over time. Ladies and gentlemen, abundance of opportunities. When you have abundance, you can share. When you can share, you can work on the common good. It can happen on two islands. It can happen anywhere. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, just one word, I would say that uh, all this that we are describing here today has been possible with the, the help of uh, Gunther. Uh, we are working together for one, how now? one, uh, sorry, one year now. And uh, when I see what we, have what we have already done in one year, I hardly imagine what we are going to do in 25 years. Well, we so don't wanna, I don't have <laughs> 25 years anymore. I'm 63, 20 plus 25. I mean, I can't have that patience anymore. I need to accelerate. We have to have speed and scale better. Thank you. Thank you, Javier. Thank you very much to all three of you, to everyone uh, who contrib contributed to that, uh, and to all the great projects, and nice to see yet another signature being made. We're looking forward to seeing you all uh, in 25 years, including the then 88-year-old Gunther Pauli.